time, I would like to hear a motion from the floor that the treasurer's report be accepted. Any seconds? Second. Any questions? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so moved. Now the president's report. Earlier this year, back in August, we had for the first time a retreat. And we spent all day on a Saturday, the first Saturday in August, in this hotel, talking about the goals that, as a board, we wanted to see the Garden State Bar move into. And at the end of the meeting, I had told people that I was going to keep my remarks very short when it came to the president's report. Because I was told years ago that the three attributes of a great speaker is number one, to be brief to be witty, and then to be seated. <laughs> so I told him I would just say thank you. But when I thought about it as the days passed, I figured I need to do more than that. So just for a few minutes, I just want to tell you a few things. At first, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your support. It's been a long year, but it's been a very short year. It's been a very short year because there were so many things happening while I was president of the Garden State Bar Association. And there are some, some things that you guys know about because it was well publicized, but there are other things that you don't know about because that wasn't publicized. But there was a question about what do we do with the specialty bars because as you know, the governor doesn't want to give the specialty bars the due that they had in the past. And as a specialty bar, the Garden State Bar Association has an outstanding reputation. The legal community looks to this organization for its views on many subjects. We have been influential in supporting many people who have applications for judicial and government appointments. The majority of the persons that we have backed, except for one, were appointed to various positions that they applied for. And when we have disagreed, it has been done respectfully, and we are still effective in getting our point across. Our Young Lawyers Division during this past year has been very active. It has recruited many law students as well as young attorneys to join this organization. Darrell Williams and Jennifer Watson took on as co-chairs of this organization, and they have done a phenomenal job. They talked about, and we were supposed to meet with Habitat for Humanity, and we are working on that. They also went to many symposiums at the law schools here in the area, both Rutgers and Seton Hall. For the first time, we partnered with Noble, and we had an installation and a recognition ceremony for one of our members, Paula Dow. She's the first African-American female attorney general in the state of New Jersey. And that was a successful event. I also want to thank the presidents of the other specialty bars who are present. Would you please stand? Miguel. And then I want to thank our sponsors uh, who stepped up when I made a phone call to sponsor this event. The board decided that we wanted this installation ceremony to be befitting of the Garden State Bar Association. I only had to make three phone calls in order to make tonight happen. The first phone call that I make, which is always the first phone call I make, and she knows it, was to Carol Corbin Walker. Yes. <laughs> At home, many of our friends, relatives, neighbors, and work colleagues were without jobs and, see, and some even without homes. And last week, the U.S. Census Bureau announced that poverty levels were at a 51-year high, with a record 43.6 million Americans living below the poverty line, some of whom were middle class just three years ago. Socially, I give you the following perspective from Dr. Cornell West, who in his book, Hope on the Tightrope, observes, we are now in one of the most truly prophetic moments in the, in the history of this country. The poor and the very poor are sleeping with self-destruction. The working and middle classes are struggling against paralyzing pessimism, and the privileged are swinging between cynicism and hedonism. Yes, these are 
uncertain times. Kids opting out of class than staying in. Again, I concede we are in uncertain times. However, I submit to you that these are precisely the times for organizations like the Garden State Bar Association. In January of 1962, an otherwise strong economy had a major hiccup, signaling the prospect of an oncoming recession. And President John F. Kennedy told a nervous country, I think that the economy has more vitality in it than some of its premature mourners. In 1962, the poverty levels for African Americans, Hispanics, and Asian Pacific Islanders was more than two and a half times the overall poverty rate in this country. In 1962, the Fifth Circuit of Appeals ordered the University of Mississippi to admit James Meredith. The Fourteenth Amendment to the Constitution was submitted by Congress to abolish poll taxes in federal elections. And yes, even in these uncertain times, a group of attorneys from Essex, Union, and Hudson County came together to form the Barristers, the harbinger of the Garden State Bar Association. In 1967, a period that was seized with uncertainty, brazen police brutality, a rampant housing crisis, and industrial decline. All was capped by six months of tumultuous days of rioting in Newark. It was in those uncertain times that a group of black students formed the Concerned Legal Associates, the CLA, to address the needs of African American lawyers, graduates, and practicing attorneys to advance the science of jurisprudence, improve the administration of justice, and to support initiatives designed to improve economic conditions of all individuals, and to work to eliminate discrimination and inequality based on race, ethnic, or sexual considerations. It was in uncertain times that the GSBA was born. It was in uncertain times that the GSBA was preserved. It was in uncertain times that the GSBA stood up and stood out. And today, it is in uncertain times that we, the members of the Garden State Bar, boldly declare we are here, our mission is still relevant, and our resolve can never be more clear. Yet we understand that the discussion of relevance is really a discussion of value. During the summer, in preparation for the board's strategic planning session, we conducted a survey of our membership. We learned a lot. We learned that we needed to be more than a social organization. We learned that we needed to reach out and make sure that there were opportunities for every member to participate. 